And so you have everything happening at sea. I mean, these vessels stay at sea for years. Most of the fishing vessels don't go to harbors. They transfer their fish onto other vessels, they get refueled at sea, the, the crews are, are changed at sea, etc. So nobody sees what's happening ever. There's nobody, nobody to go there and tell them to respect the rules. It's, it's difficult to describe unless you've seen it. It's another world, it's a different planet. Our seas and oceans cover almost three quarters of the Earth's surface and an estimated 80% of all life lives within them. Yet every day, marine environments in Africa and around the world are facing an unprecedented onslaught. Thousands of pirate ships are roaming the seas in search of treasure, one of the world's most precious resources, fish. Identified as among the most serious threats to the world's fish stocks, illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, or pirate fishing, is putting huge pressure on marine ecosystems and the food we take for granted. These operators don't respect fisheries laws, safety and hygiene standards are ignored, no taxes are paid on their catch, and human rights abuses on these ships are commonplace. Illegal and highly damaging fishing gear are often used, simply to minimize effort and maximize profit. Such gear can destroy crucial habitats and are commonly indiscriminate in what they catch. Once the catch is on board, it is sorted by the crews who keep only what is considered valuable on the international market. Up to 90% of what is caught, known as bycatch, is simply dumped back into the sea, dead. Pirate fishers contribute to undermining global fisheries management. We are running out of fish. While pirate fishing happens globally, these operators particularly target developing countries. Africa has some of the highest rates of illegal fishing in the world. Although some laws and regulations may exist, all too often they are insufficient and lack real enforcement, allowing unscrupulous fishing vessels to easily operate. Pirate fishers are stealing an estimated $1 billion worth of fish every year from African waters alone and in turn are depriving some of the poorest countries in the world of a crucial source of income, employment and food. The chances of getting caught are tiny compared to the massive profits that can be made. Government is losing a huge sum of money with this pirate fishing that is going on. When vessels fish illegally, they are not simply stealing fish. Coastal communities throughout Africa depend on fish not only as a major source of food and protein, but also as an important means of income. Pirate fishers are literally stealing the lives of these people. In many coastal regions, fishing and fish smoking are some of the very few ways that men and women can earn money. This traditional way of preserving fish has been used by the women of these communities for thousands of years. But if the men don't bring back the fish, the women have no means of making a living and cannot afford to feed or educate their children. Fish business is the only business that these communities have, and it is seriously under threat. All countries have an exclusive maritime zone, but throughout Africa, these waters are not being respected. In particular, many countries have specific zones reserved for local fishermen and as fish breeding areas. Yet these are frequently invaded by pirate fishing vessels. Une fois la nuit tombée, il avance vers les côtes pour draguer là-bas. Après le bon matin, vers les 4h, 5h, 6h du matin, ils sont en train de ressortir. Hand-built wooden canoes used by local fishermen cannot compete with the industrial ships. They are intended as inshore craft and are very vulnerable in the open ocean. Pirate fishing is 
As well as stealing fish, the illegal vessels frequently destroy valuable nets and often threaten the lives of local fishermen. This is a big way picking really tall in King in Jacare. Whilst fishing with his father in the river estuary, a pirate trawler struck their fishing gear. In the chaos, Jacaria was caught up in the trawler's nets and drowned. This is a recurring story. This boat has been caught illegally fishing off the coast of Sierra Leone. It is a rare arrest for the local Navy and is a result of a close collaboration between the Sierra Leone government, the NGO, the Environmental Justice Foundation and local fishing communities. Like many illegal vessels, it has bought a license to fish to give itself the appearance of legality. In this case, the license was received only the day before. Yet immediately, it began illegally fishing far inside the inshore zone reserved for local fishermen. And to hide its identity, all names and markings are deliberately covered. Once an illegal vessel such as this has hauled its catch aboard, it is dropped below deck where the crew sort through it keeping only those species that have high international market value. Fish that are vital to local markets and species integral to the health of the marine ecosystem are simply wasted. This stolen fish is not going back to Sierra Leone. It'll be packed into boxes and frozen for export. The label doesn't say that the fish comes from Sierra Leone or even West Africa. It is labeled Republic of Korea, the other side of the world. The illegal catch will be laundered into the world market and sold at a massive profit to this pirate fishing operator. Consumers will be unaware of the origin of their fish or of the countries who suffer the devastating effects caused by this kind of activity. Thousands of these pirate fishing vessels are operating in African waters today, ignoring international fisheries laws and leaving behind them a trail of destruction. Yet they are extremely elusive and evade being caught or prosecuted by using a number of legal loopholes. Pirate fishing vessels are fully aware that they are operating illegally and avoid being identified by carefully hiding their names and call signs. Working together, several vessels will operate under the same name and only one license. If detected, they simply rename their boats and often re-flag them with a flag of convenience belonging to one of the many nations that operate an open registry. Countries that sell flags of convenience are essentially selling the use of their flag to foreign-owned fishing vessels for a small fee. In return, they are supposed to ensure that the vessels flagged to their country abide by the international laws of the sea. However, many are notorious for lacking the ability or will to control these vessels, allowing them to steal with impunity. Avoiding questioning over their catches, pirate fishing vessels also avoid scrutiny over the working conditions for their crews. Crew members are often untrained and utterly unsupported. The majority of these workers on illegal fishing vessels are targeted by recruitment agencies seeking vulnerable people from developing countries, including in Africa, where alternative work is scarce. Once on board, crews are often subject to extreme exploitation and abuse. Personal documents are taken away, food and accommodation can be terrible, and frequently, men are never paid. Physical abuse and murder are widely reported. The conditions can be so bad that many of the men working aboard pirate fishing vessels meet international labor organization definitions of forced labor. To avoid inspection and taxes, pirate fishing vessels rarely go to port. Once the catch is packed and frozen in the hold, it is transshipped at sea onto refrigerated cargo ships bringing food and supplies in one direction and taking the valuable catch in the other. These cargo ships allow pirate fishing vessels to remain at sea for months and sometimes years. Once the stolen fish is brought to land, it is then laundered into the legitimate fish markets of the world, its origins virtually untraceable. This is made possible by so-called ports of convenience, such as Las Palmas in the Canary Islands. The lack of strong port controls in many countries has been identified as a key challenge to efforts to combat illegal fishing operations. Around the coast of Africa, pirate fishing vessels are destroying marine habitats, destroying the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of people and taking away a vital source of income for developing economies across the continent. While some African countries have acknowledged the problem, 
very often fisheries have been given too little attention or resources. The international community has also not adequately supported those countries that seek to end illegal fishing. There is no single solution, but the answers to the problems are well known and achievable. Key to success will be effective cooperation. The problem of pirate fishing in Africa is not confined to any one area, and it'll take action and collaboration at local, national, regional, and even continental levels to effectively combat the pirates. Governments, international bodies, NGOs, and fishers themselves all have important roles to play. If no effective action is taken, illegal operators will continue to steal fish relentlessly, moving from country to country until there are no more fish to be caught.